So welcome again, everybody, to this online session about how to get involved in Refugee Week at your school, hosted by Refugee Week and Schools of Sanctuary. Um, I'm Emily from Counterpoints Arts, which coordinates Refugee Week, and I'm going to kick off by saying a bit about what Refugee Week is and how you can take part. So I'm going to share my screen. Can everybody see Anjali Rofe on a skateboard? Awesome. Can you still, still see Anjali Rofe on a skateboard? Okay, lovely. Um, so that's uh, one of our images from Refugee Week last year. Um, so Refugee Week, as many of you know, is an annual festival celebrating the contributions, the creativity and the resilience of refugees as well as promoting understanding of why people have had to leave their homes and the barriers that they face when they do. It happens every year around World Refugees Day on the 20th of June and Refugee Week 2021 is the 14th to the 20th of June, um, which is somehow, somehow very soon now. And the theme is We Cannot Walk Alone, which is a quote from Martin Luther King. So Refugee Week was founded in 98 um, in response to growing hostility to refugees and people seeking safety. And sadly, we seem to be seeing more and more in the policy proposals and the language used about people seeking safety, um, that they need to combat this hostility, to remember our common humanity and nurture a culture of welcome is more urgent than ever. Refugee Week is a partnership project coordinated by us at Counterpoints Arts, um, and we're really proud that the National Education Union and City of Sanctuary are among our national partners. Um, Refugee Week is an umbrella festival. So what that means is that anyone can hold their own event um, or activity. And um, so it's really, it's a network, it's a movement of, of um, individuals and groups right across the UK and beyond um, that make Refugee Week happen every year. Um, and in our last pre-COVID year, in 2019, there were 800 events um, across Refugee Week and Refugee Festival Scotland. So Refugee Week is an opportunity for us to um, connect with the voices and perspectives of refugees and people seeking safety through arts, through culture, that might be music, um, books, creative activities, this is the Giant Dolls House project um, through the national media, it invites us to reimagine who a refugee is, what a refugee looks like and connect with refugee experiences in our shared history and culture. You can see um, the author J Judith Kerr here in this portrait series um, by Gillian Edelstein for Refugee Week 2019. Refugee Week is also often about coming together um, through what we love, whether that's comedy, football, hip hop. And Refugee Week is about children and young people who really lead the way and, and are so inspiring every Refugee Week. Um, this poem is by a child in Topaz class in Cardiff in Wales. Um, and we tweeted it and it was picked up by a group in Canada who were so inspired by it, but they, that they used it as part of a Refugee Week event there um, last year. And you will all, everyone on this call, you'll know better than me that children and young people really have the power to understand this issue in a very direct way. I think a four-year-old can understand the importance of home and of being safe and being welcomed in a way that some of us adults have sadly forgotten. Um, and at hundreds of schools every year, teachers like yourselves help children to connect with this, to nurture their compassion, to develop, develop an understanding of the issues that they'll carry with them into adult life. Um, and that's how change happens. And that's why the work you're doing is, is obviously so important. Schools can get involved in Refugee Week in all sorts of ways, and we're going to be hearing um, more ideas um, and inspiration and resources throughout this, this session. Um, so that might look like holding a, a dedicated assembly or a, a lesson, taking part in creative activities, um, our simple acts, which I'll speak about in a moment. Um, there's various online events and activities that are um, aimed at uh, children and young people. And then moving beyond Refugee Week, exploring becoming a school of sanctuary, embedding welcome in your school all year round. Um, I have nearly finished the main um, 
last thing I wanted to say is that in terms of resources and support from us, so uh, in the second half of May, we'll be sharing a schools activity pack, which will pool a range of different resources um, that you can use in your school for every key stage. Um, so they will include lesson plans, films, suggestions of books, um, simple acts, which are uh, simple everyday things each of us can do to show our solidarity and support and engage with refugee experiences during Refugee Week. Um, so that includes things like watch a film, read a book, and we're collaborating with the great get together on a great walk together um, on Sunday the 20th of June. And Refugee Week is obviously seven days of the year, but it's often the starting point for involvement that then grows and continues all year round. Um, and we're going to hear more from Jake in a moment about schools of sanctuary and how, um, you know, Refugee Week can be a seed that, that grows into, into something bigger um, the rest of the year. So we really hope that at the end of this session, you'll feel inspired to join the Refugee Week movement or continue uh, as part of the Refugee Week movement. Our, vision is for Refugee Week to happen in every school in the country and we'd love to hear your ideas about the networks and approaches we should be using to help make this happen. And um, without further ado, I'm going to hand over to Jake Rose Brown at Norfolk Schools of Sanctuary, who's founder of uh, the Norfolk Day of Welcome. Uh, thank you so much, Emily, and thank you for everyone uh, for joining us today. I have to say that my presentation won't be as polished as Emily's because I've been in class all day. I'm a teacher. Uh, I've got a year class in year three a junior school in Norwich, but I, I also lead Norfolk Schools of Sanctuary, as Emily said. And I'm going to be talking to you today about um, our annual day of learning and solidarity that we organise, which is an accompaniment to Refugee Week, happens on the Friday before Refugee Week. And I'm hoping that some of you will want to get involved. Now, um, I'm sure that lots of your schools mark Refugee Week. Um, and, and I know as an educator, that, that sometimes that involvement doesn't really go beyond holding an assembly, which is fine. That's a great starting point. But what a day of welcome is, is a way to deepen that engagement um, with and take Refugee Week as an opportunity to really focus on refugee rights and experience and local refugee history as well. So to take the conversation further. Um, so I, I developed this day in, in collaboration with um, Jeanette Baxter at Anglo Ruskin University used to be called Norfolk Welcomes, but this year we're trying to encourage um, schools across the county, uh, the country to get involved and inspire similar communities of practice to set up, hopefully. The idea is, it's called a day of welcome. It's on Friday the 11th of June, so the week before Refugee Week. So primary and secondary um, schools, and we provide lots of resources, activities, and ideas that are kind of tried and tested that we've used over the last three, four years for all key stages. Uh, and we're aiming to do three things. So building an understanding of the experiences of refugees and asylum seekers and their contributions, and then uncover and celebrate little known histories of refugee migration. And then finally, we are encouraging schools to signpost to their pupils and their parents and carers and their staff, refugee week activities that are happening the following week, um, that either locally or nationally and encourage them to get involved to deepen that engagement. And what, what we try to do is make it easy for busy teachers and schools to do these things. Um, so I, I'm gonna share in the chat very quickly, some links, there's our website and where you can learn more about the day. There's a teacher's guide there, which we'll look at in a second very briefly and where you can register if you'd like to participate. Um, so actually I'm just gonna share with you the teacher's guide because I've only got a few minutes. Um, so I think that's the best way to give a brief taste of what this involves. I'm going to share my screen. Which one am I sharing? That one there. Okay. So this teacher's guide just gives a brief overview of the resources that we are offering this year to schools and some ideas of what it might look like. And every school that looks different might just be an assembly in your school, or you might have a non-uniform day and raise funds for a local organization that supports refugees and asylum seekers. We've got a whole range of lessons and series of lessons that you might want to dip, dip into. Some schools have a whole day off curriculum. Um, as I said, signposting Refugee Week events is really important. And then to go further, really, really interesting, I think, to look at your local region's history of refugee migration and tell some of those stories that are little known. Um, and, and a lot of our resources have a creative outcome. So the children and young people are responding artistically or imaginatively to what they're learning at the end. So creating poetry, videos, artwork, which is all good for sharing with the community and with the wider network. 
So if I scroll down, there's lots of, I can see that, that most people are not in the east of England. So we've got lots of resources which are generally about refugee migration in the UK. So there are like circle time activities, assemblies, um, there's a re there's a, some videos of a, some books being read. There's lots of creative response activities which are extended art lessons essentially with lots of um, PSHE refugee experience uh, content and context. Um, and then there are some supporting materials like um, book lists and guidance for teachers and a link to the inspiration for our, some of our new resources this year, which is the Havens East project, which mm -hmm. uncovers the, um, the experiences of Basque child, child refugees who came here fleeing the Spanish Civil War. It's a really good, interesting, fascinating story. I encourage you to have a look at the website. Um, what I'm hoping is... In Norfolk, we've developed this quite a lot. You can see as I scroll down, all of these resources are specifically about Norfolk refugee histories, different strands of that that we've researched over the last four years, um, and then created resources inspired by those stories. And then we've got stickers and posters that are free to share with schools. We're having a virtual teach meet to share good practice in Refugee Week. There's a songbook, which is all songs inspired by um, histories of migration in the local area. And this year we're trying to get up and running in Cambridge and Essex, similar communities of practice. So over the years, hopefully they can build up their own bank of resources. And we're also open to, to encouraging and, in, and helping other um, counties do that across the, county, across the country. And hopefully the UNHCR are gonna support us with that by offering a free online CPD programme which is focused on uh, refugee rights and refugee experience and be a good kind of foundation for you then to go away and, and, and create your own research projects and resources for a day of welcome next year, hopefully. So I think that's probably five minutes. I think I did quite well. I'm gonna pass on to someone else. Um, do look in the chat um, and I will send out some information following, following the meeting. I hope that some of you will join us for a day of welcome. Thanks so much, Jake. Um, I can't believe you fit all of that into five minutes. Um, all right, now we're going to hear from Gaida Derar, who is a school speaker and um, also an alumnus of City of Sanctuary's Sanctuary in Politics course. Over to you, Gaida. Uh, hello. Listen. Hello, everyone. Um, I want to thank you all for coming today along. And uh, I want to also introduce, I did a um, type of work and campaign with City of Century. I was part of Century in Political Group to speak uh, to schools and colleges, university. I'm trying just to share my, uh, my presentation, but I don't know for a reason I could have. Uh, you seeing the share screen button, Gaida? Yes, I'm doing it, but my screen is not up here. Mm -hmm. yeah. That always happens at the worst moment. Yeah. It's just the presentation is not up here when I press that. Gaida, sometimes if you have lots of other screens open, it doesn't show up on the top. So maybe you might want to click close some of the other screens. Yeah. Take your time. Sorry for this. No, no, take your time. There's lots of super interesting links being shared in the chat, which we can um, we can dive into while we're waiting. Also, guys, if you prefer, we can go to Karen and come back to you. Yes, please. Shall we do that? Mm -hmm. um, okay. Yeah, over to you, Karen, at National Education Union. Okay. Ooh, that was um, a bit of a surprise. <laughs> so, okay, let me just do that. Um, so, good afternoon, everyone. Um, I shall uh, just, sorry, I just need to find my notes. Um, so the NEU, first of all, is very proud to be partnering with Refugee Week um, for this year, which we have done for many years in the past. Um, and we, particularly in this year, um, we're very 
it's very important that all of us get involved somehow. Last year for refugees was was pretty awful. I mean, not only did we have the the terrible proposals from Priti Patel um, around what would happen to asylum seekers um, and the new the new leg the new proposed legislation, but there's also a bit of a sham of a consultation going on at the moment. Um, and there's over 200 organisations from asylum seekers and refugees that have signed up to oppose the consultation. Um, because I think it's just a bit of a sham, but really brutal statistics and, and proposals from, um, from Priti Patel. As well as that, during the pandemic, refugees um, and asylum seekers have had some of the worst, uh, worst times um, without real care and kindness from a lot of people which they need. So we really think Refugee Week this, this year is really important. What I'm sharing at the moment is last week's screenshot, a screenshot of last, last year's Refugee Week, which we put on the NEU website. Um, and this year we'll do the same. We'll have something up on the NEU website. Um, we're also gonna do a special webinar on um, teaching migration on the 9th of June. Um, so look out for that. Um, and of course, we're going to share um, a lot of our resources. Um, and all the resources from Refugee Week. So some of the things we've already got on the site are these teaching resources for welcoming refugee children to your school. Um, and that's got lots of guidance in there as well as some, some teaching notes. We've got videos, which are, um, they've also got teaching notes that go alongside them, which is about um, young, young people um, speaking about their experiences coming to a school in the UK with training notes on them. We've also developed an anti-racist framework and in that framework, you will find these sections on leadership, teaching and learning, voice and power, well-being and belonging, community and context and principles and values. And that's gone out to every school and every college and our reps are doing a fantastic job of taking that out and picking that up with, with, the, with their senior leadership teams. And in the anti-racist framework, there are specific questions and specific points around refugees. Um, so for refugees, so for example, these are just, um, we, we say these points, the UK does not have a white or monocultural history. This is not a country that has been unsettled by migration. It's a country made by migration. Without giving every student a knowledge of this history, the UK's understanding of itself will always be mythical and inaccurate. Um, and the, some of the questions in the, in the framework are how can the school and college support refugees and challenge the increasingly negative stigmatization and stereotyping of refugee ch children and families? And how would you celebrate the positive history of migration in your local area? And I'll put the links in the chat in a minute, but also happy to send them on afterwards to anybody who's in this session. Um, and that's, that's all I wanted to kind of share with you, um, to, just to say that we, we are producing lots of guidance. We're, we're ramping up for, for Refugee Week and we will send um, emails out to all of our members um, as soon as possible with all that information on and details of the 9th of June webinar. Um, so thank you, Emily. Thanks for arranging this and um, look forward to Refugee Week. Thanks so much, Karen. Um, Gaida, are you, are you ready if we go to you now? Yes. Fantastic, over to you. Can you see you now? In presentation, just because I cannot see you. So yes, I'm a uh, I'm refugee myself. I came here in November 2015. I'm five uh, years and a half now. So uh, what I'm doing since I arrived, I, I talked with like, a lot of challenging that nobody know what exactly who I am or, or what I'm doing in the school. So working too closely with Refugee Council and after that with a set of century uh, organization, I start speak and tell my story to different places. And one of the thing, places I go to that is school universities and uh, primary schools and community group. So the like walking in the schools and all this, I find that the problem going from like um, from young age because nobody educated about who's the refugees and why they are in the country, what is the situation, 
and that I will say in the long uh, term come to the, to find jobs to find places to go anywhere I need to explain about who I am why I'm in the country what is my state in the country and different coaching come along so that uh, who I'm uh, that who I am and that what I'm doing at the moment so the audience that we target that like everybody I even people sometimes in every place I go they ask me and I start to explain more and more. And I find that as a chance to explain about, uh, like to educate more people in the community about refugees. So that to make it easier for me, for the other refugees also in the country. So the presentation I go, I give in the schools all the time about the rebuilt life and peace and safety. Uh, I go with my colleague Esther, who is a young refugee who's come to this country in age of schools. So she speak about the part in the schools and her experience in school. The presentation itself that to tell the refugee journey, tell our stories like including the refugee journey. And also we bring the figure where, where is the refugee come from, uh, what is their life before they became refugees. I bring videos like how that people become refugees and that from the mirror, which there is a small girl, she became refugees, uh, like, like a small short videos. Uh, what is the difference between refugee, migrant and asylum seeker organization worldwide work, worldwide work with refugees and replaced people. Uh, also the local organization work with the refugees, uh, how many refugees and presentation, uh, like um, the numbers in the UK as well. I use pictures, I use this, but this vision is being different between uh, young age children and also between adults. So that the presentation adjusted every time depend to the group age. Uh, here is some pictures from me and my colleague like giving presentation in different school and colleges and community group, uh, young age girls and also university. Uh, I've been to University Hall twice, one for staff, one for a student, social care student. I started in college which three times, St. Mary College twice, and uh, Richard School. Humberside bullies several times, especially the new training uh, police officer. And also I switched to Hennessy Air and local organizations. So what is the aim of this? To introduce refugees and asylum seekers to like into the community that like introduce refugees itself and also to introduce uh, communities or local communities to the refugees, uh, raise awareness and tell us a story, educate like I as written here hold because that where I I been and it's riding, but I do also over like uh, places like different other places. Uh, bring role models for the refugees and asylum seekers to show themselves and also they they can do and they can speak and there's people can listen to them. So in conclusion to that, I will say, uh, we would like all the time to help to reach as much number of people we can, open doors to local communities and refugees to engage with each other, reduce the difficulties and challenges for refugees they face every day and stop bullying against the refugees, children in school. So I believe from my position, from the talk I give everywhere and the question I've been asking in the classrooms and on the schools, colleges that education should be started in early age to know all segments of the community and as well as to give opportunities to children to ask this question, like uh, the best question I get, I get it from the young age, year five, year six, eight years old and all this, they ask me direct questions. So if you want to do anything for a school from your uh, experience, give them the truth, let them ask and also open the door for them to know and understand, give them like video, like you said before, give them all the material that can help them to understand the community around them that will make life easier for every side like refugees or local communities. Thank you. Ida, thank you so much for, for sharing and thank you um, to JK and Karen. There's so much there, um, really kind of clear ideas about what engaging in Refugee Week can look like and also why this work is important, as well as 
thinking about how we route refugee week into longer term work on anti-racism and thinking about how we um, encourage children and young people to understand our history. Um, so we're now going to open it up to the floor, as it were. Um, so this is an opportunity for you to share, um, to ask any questions you might have. Maybe you've got plans for refugee that you'd like to share, um, resources you'd like to share, uh, ideas. Um, if I can ask you to, because happily there's a lot of us on this call, so uh, more than 100 people on this call, which is fantastic. So if I can ask you to um, really keep contributions to a minute, that would be fantastic. And just a reminder that we're filming and if you um, speak, you'll, you'll appear on the film that we'll share. So if you'd rather put a question in a chat, in the chat box, that's obviously absolutely fine. Um, so to kick off, I'm gonna hand over to, to Sarah. Oh yeah, and um, if you'd like to speak, raise your actual hand or your Zoom hand. Um, and if it's tricky to do either of those, um, put it in the chat. Um, so to kick off, we're going to go to Sarah from... Hi, everyone. I'm so delighted to be here. I hope you can hear me. Um, I, so my name is Sarah Truett. I work for City of Sanctuary UK. I am a regional coordinator, so I support about 30 City of Sanctuary groups across Yorkshire, Humberside, and the Northeast. But I also work on supporting our Schools of Sanctuary project, um, which has sort of developed over organically over the last several years. It's currently now about a network of about 300 schools that have gone through a process of learning about why people have been forcibly displaced and figuring out ways that their school can embody welcome and make sure it's a special place. Uh, we use what we call a learn, embed and share model. So that means that we ask schools to be recognized as a school of sanctuary. We ask them to learn about why, my, why people have been forced to flee, why they arrived in the UK, what the asylum is like. We ask them to think through their policies and practices and embed real changes and strategies to make sure that everyone feels welcome. And that's why, as I mentioned in the chat and as Karen was speaking, we're real strong proponents of the anti-racism charter because we think that's integral to creating inclusive, welcoming schools. So um, that's a big, we're, we're, we stand firmly behind that process. And then the sort of the, the last element to be recognized as a school sanctuary is to, to be sharing of, of, of what your school has done, both within your throughout your school, but with your parents' community, with your governors, with your local community, ideally with your media, and with the wider network of Schools of Sanctuary. I think Jake's uh, description of the work that they've been doing uh, across Norfolk is a great demonstration of that, you know, taking what they've been doing there and then extending it out to all of us across the network. Um, I'm not going to talk too much about Schools of Sanctuary today because we're just here to talk about how you can celebrate Refugee Week, but I did want to flag a couple upcoming events, which hopefully will, um, if this web webinar today has interest, piqued your interest in, in becoming a School of Sanctuary, you can learn more. On June 29th, we'll be hosting a webinar which will walk you through the entire process, outline all the criteria, how you can get involved, um, how you can uh, put together a portfolio of evidence to demonstrate how your school is welcoming. Um, and we have a website which has, is full of lots of different resources, books, videos, YouTube, uh, resources, assemblies, links to organizations that um, have, uh, you know, lots of ideas for how to bring these lessons into the classroom. And this is not just for primary, it's for secondary. We also have separate streams for our FE colleges. So, um, you know, if you have some older pupils, there's some great resources on there that can, can help you. We have a JISC mailing list that we really encourage you to come uh, and join, where we shall share regular updates, new resources, ideas, things that are coming along. And it's a space for people to ask questions so teachers can share, you know, I want to do a lesson in geography, who has some suggestions? So that's another option. We have a Schools of Sanctuary newsletter that comes out sort of for every term. Um, we have a couple of back issues that are full of wonderful, inspiring stories. So um, please do consider signing up and, and being a recipient of that. Um, and finally, I just wanted to kind of close on the one thing people often ask me is, well, you know, it's, we don't have any refugees in our school or, uh, you know, we, there are no f other languages spoken in our school. Can we still be a school of sanctuary? And my answer to that is sort of an unequivocal yes, 
we want all schools to feel welcoming, regardless of, of who's in it and it, whatever in that space. And there's so much that can be done in all types of schools. So there's no sort of requirement or expectation that, you know, you may have asylum seeking students in your uh, population to be part of this process. There are activities and ways to, to, to get involved. So I'll close there. I'm going to pop in the chat my email um, and my colleague Megan, who's also on this call. Um, we are, we'd love to hear from you if you want more resources, guidance, support, um, please get in touch. And with that, I'll turn back over to Emily. Thank you. Thanks so much, Sarah. Um, let's go to Chloe from British Red Cross, Cross and then um, Michael. Hi, thanks, Emily, and thanks for letting me crash this a little bit. Um, I always don't want to talk about more resources because I know, you know, there are so many, as we've seen from this meeting, there are so many different kinds of resources that are available for teachers. And I think that's a really great thing. It means that, you know, you guys have so much um, choice and you can find something that suits your circumstances and your, you know, your locality or the time that you have or whatever. Um, but I will share with you the kind of resources that we have. I'll just quickly, oh, I won't share my screen, but I'll share a link in a minute. So we have been creating resources for teachers to use in schools and, um, you know, community groups for, for a long time now ar around refugee and migration. And we also take part in um, the Refugee Week each year where we kind of release a new resource, which we will release tomorrow, this year's one. Um, and I just wanted to yeah, point you guys in the direction. There's a huge fleet of different kinds of resources that are based on um, the Refugee Week themes, but also about like terminology, as we've said, which is a big you know, thing um, and how to treat people with respect and dignity and how to welcome people. Um, this year's uh, resource to tie in with the theme of You Cannot Walk Alone focuses on this experience of loneliness and um, exclusion and inclusion um, that a lot of refugees feel. The British Red Cross have been doing a lot of work and research on loneliness, which I think is, especially this past year, a universal emotion and, and, and experience. We all know what it's like to be lonely, but people who have to go through refugee journeys, people who are seeking asylum and the way that they're treated are, like compounded by loneliness on a, a scale that most of us can't understand. So it's really important to pick up on those human experiences and, and put the human back in the refugee. You know, they're a person, they're not just a, a title. So that will be our resource that goes live tomorrow. Um, yeah, so that's it basically. Our resources have been designed so that teachers who maybe have never taught about refugee and migration before, feel like they don't really know much, can deliver these. All the information that you need to know is in the resource. And as we say, it's just really about this human experience. That's really what we want people to be teaching, you know, their young people. You don't need to know the facts and figures. It's just about showing that refugees are human beings as well. So I'll share the, the link in the, the chat as well and you can sign up to get our resources so that you'll get the email when the next one goes live thanks thanks so much Claire. we were really um proud that red cross is a national partner in refugee week and we'll be including those resources also in the um overall refugee week uh, schools pack that'll be out later in may um michael and then uh sanjay i see your hand Hi, um, <clears throat> I think this is a brilliant event and this is the first time that my school is signing up to City of Sanctuary, hopefully. Um, I'm coming here to put the case after this meeting. Um, but we have done lots of stuff in the past, which I thought was worth sharing because um, we had uh, we had the great get together, you know, after the murdered MP Joe Cox, we had the great get together the last few years, obviously not last year, but um, prior to that, and it, what's been really good is that we've been in, in I'm from like inner London, we're able to invite all parents and carers to come in, in their, you know, traditional costumes, their costumes from home or their cultural background, bringing food, we share food together, and we were really lucky a few years ago, because I was able to invite Lord Dubs, 
Do you know Lord Dubbs, who is the former MP for Battersea and Lord who has done lots of work around uh, fighting for refugees to be allowed to come to this country. Um, there's a Dubs Amendment in Parliament and all that. And he came in and he spoke to our Key Stage 2 children, uh, years three to six, I think. And um, he spoke about being a refugee on the kinder transport. And he talked about, um, you know, being a boy in Czechoslovakia and seeing, you know, Nazi troops on the street and then him having to leave and what is it like to be a refugee. And that was really, really powerful for the children to listen to. And subsequently, the children were able to choose a book that they wanted to study in year six, and they chose The Boy at the Back of the Class, which is a book about you know, a refugee boy coming into school. So it had a really positive experience. Prior to that, we'd done something else. We had done lots of things around, um, we'd had a refugee day, as the thing, refugee day at the end of a refugee week, the one that we created ourselves. And what that meant was, I don't know if you remember, but there was, um, a punish a Muslim letter that was sent out about four or five years ago. Absolutely horrific piece of garbage that was just spread around. And lots of people in our community were really, really affected by this and felt quite nervous about being out on whatever day it was, junior six. So they came to us because we had done stuff around refugees and we had a really, really big rally, um, love and unity in our community. And the local press came and the children came out with all their homemade banners saying refugees are welcome here. And it's absolutely fantastic. And from there, we carried on and we, we got involved with Care for Calais, who actually operate in northern France, but now we're beginning to operate in, in England, in, especially around Croydon, South London, sort of helping refugees acclimatise and helping refugees with clothes and visits to hospitals and stuff like that. And the thing about it is that, um, oh, and sorry, fine, and my year sixes wrote to David Cameron when he was prime minister saying, you've got to change your policies on refugees. And it was really, we have a strong pupil voice element in our school and getting children to write to the prime minister to say, you've got to change your, uh, your, your policies was actually really empowering for them. And, and that was great. And children are so responsive. And I'm, I'm so glad that our, our union is, my, I'm the NEU, just come out of a union meeting that our union is backing this is absolutely it's you know it really really is important and it's really important to talk about what pretty patel has said and all these other things because i don't think i don't think we can just say we're going to help refugees but we're going to be apolitical because what what the press and what some politicians are doing is political and it is deliberate and it's a divide and rule tactic and i think all the things we do around refugees in terms of help and support, it's absolutely essential, but I think it's also essential, which is why I'm so pleased my union's involved in it, especially Kevin Courtney at the top, is that it is a political act as well, and I think we need to be vocal about it as well. So thanks everyone for this fantastic meeting, it's really, really brilliant, and that's all I wanted to say. Thank you for listening. Thanks so much, Michael, that's also um, inspiring to hear. Um, let's go to Sanja. Hello everyone, I hope you can hear me. Hello, I'm Sanya and I'm here on behalf of Music Action International. And first of all, it's great to be here in this space with so many people at Refugee, before Refugee Week. And um, we at Music Action International, we use music and creativity and songwriting to help people overcome um, effects of war, torture and armed conflict. We work with refugees, with asylum seekers, and we also do projects at schools. So before, before this pandemic, we would go into schools with a team of facilitators, some of them with a refugee background, and we would get to know each other, play games. But at some point, our um, facilitators will share their stories and kids are encouraged to write songs. And then we would perform these songs. So we do it all in this kind of creative way to raise awareness and to also increase well-being amongst pupils and uh, refugee pupils too. And um, for this resource, we have created a creative pack with the things that we usually do when we go into the classroom. So um, we have videos with songs and warm-ups and introductions to what refugees are and asylum seekers. And this will all be online. There's already some parts online, so you could start right away if you wanted to learn songs in different languages from 
all our facilitators who work with Music Action International. And I think that's it. Yeah, and you can use the, uh, the resource and it doesn't have to be a music subject. It's suitable for all subjects. It's, you can interweave it with all the other resources that you might use. And yeah, the videos are quite self-explanatory. That's it, yeah. I'm curious to hear more later and thank you very much. Thanks, Sanjan. We're looking forward to including those resources from Music Action International in the schools pack as well. Um, I'm looking for more hands. Feel free to raise your hand if you'd like to share anything. Oh, hello. Um, Let's go to um, Alwyn and then Katya. Oh, hi, yeah, thank you. I couldn't find my my hand there, so I just kind of waved. So um, thanks for this event and thanks for just a quick minute of your time now. So I am from Cardiff here in Wales. And just to share a little bit about what we're doing here, we started off in Cardiff with trying to engage with a few schools and we started up with our little Schools of Sanctuary Network, which has been quite successful. We've now got a few schools that are recognised as Schools of Sanctuary, but really, really fortunately now, this little network has expanded and it's become national. Um, so it's quite successful. So we've got the 22 local authorities in Wales, a lot of their um, staff that are working with minority ethnic children or with gypsy traveller children, that kind of forum, um, attend these network meetings now, as well as with representatives from Welsh government and our school inspectorate, which is Estyn, which would be Ofsted in England. So um, it's quite successful. We've made links. We've made great links through the organisations and, and things that you've put on, Sarah, for example. And our guest speaker last time at our network meeting was um, a lovely lady from Liverpool. So it's great that we could share their experience with us. And I think a lot of schools in Wales would come to try and model what they were doing there and their good practice in the schools that we had sharing what they were doing there. So it's just to say we're there, we're working really hard on it. Wales is a nation of sanctuary. So it, it comes from a lot of support from Welsh government as well. They've got a brilliant mm -hmm. website in case anybody's interested in the Welsh Government Nation of Sanctuary website, where there's a lot of information that is relevant for beyond Wales, uh, but just to flag that up. And if there's anything you need to know from our, our end of the world, then please do get in touch. Thanks, Alwyn, that's really great to hear. Um, let's go to Katya. Hi, um, it says Katharina, but I'm Katya actually on my, <laughs> on my screen. Um, because it's, well, from a different organization. But I, I'm Katja, and I'm uh, part of the Giant Dolls House project. And we ask people, anyone, to make a dolls house in a shoebox, and then we make them into an installation. And we usually do open questions so children can make them any way they want to. And usually they really enjoy doing it because it's, it's very creative. Uh, we've done it with children from all over the world and the idea is that each box is a very personal representation of the thoughts of the person who made it and because it's a box you can't see where the person is from, what the background is and then when you put them all together it, it looks like actually all children have, all people have, are similarly idiosyncratic. We, we did it last year, in, in Zatar, two years ago in, in Zatari camp, and the 12-year-old girls wanted to be fashion designers. And the only thing is they were more conscious of what the world should be. I think they were much more thoughtful, but they wanted the same things that the children who made boxes in, in London after that uh, said. So we're doing, well, then COVID happened, and we're now doing another virtual giant doll's house and we ask everybody to make dolls houses again, but this time sharing the experience of, of COVID. And that doesn't have to be like how horrible the two years was. It can also be what, where would you rather be than in your room or imagine what it is like if you are a displaced person and you do not have your own room. Um, and for that Oxfam has made um, an education link for children between seven and 14 years old which is uh, about the home and refugees and um, 
that will also lead us to our website. Our website is, is giantdollshouse.org. And there is also, you can also find the link to the Oxfam uh, resource, but we can post it in the chat later. Um, we asked then everybody to take a picture of all the dolls houses that are made and each dolls house can be submitted with the name of the person who made it and, and a small story about why, why they made it. So in that sense, I think it's also for schools, it sort of takes the creativity, but then they have to write a story about it and then it will be a community. So it's also thinking on, on lots of levels of, of um, yeah, lots of thinking levels and creativity levels of, of the children. Um, yeah, that's, so we all hope that everybody, either you will make boxes yourself or that you, you may be able to, some people may be able to make boxes with, with groups that they're working with. Because it's the idea is that the more people participate, um, the better. We're making a, a big virtual doll's house. And um, yeah, we hope it's, there will be a space somewhere to, to print it or to put it up on a screen during refugee week. Thanks so much, Katia. And again, that will be in the Refugee Week Schools Pack, the Giant Dolls House project. Um, so let's go. Uh, we've got about five minutes left before we go into our breakout room. So let's um, squeeze in Gemma and then Gaida and then Marjorie, if we can. Gemma, over to you. Thank you, Emily. Um, I'm just here from the Learning Village as a representation. So um, what the Learning Village is currently doing is we're actually able to create some bespoke um, resources for, for students. And something we have created is um, some flashcards, which I'll pop the link into the chat once I've finished, because I am conscious of time. Um, so you can have a look, which can be used sort of for whole, whole class learners to kind of understand what it's like to be a refugee. With that, we're also creating a welcome book for schools to download for free. And this is something that's coming and we will be following up so that people can have access to that. And this will be a welcome book that you can use with refugees. Um, we've got a lot of resources that we're currently working on to support the sanctuary self-assessment. So um, we will be able to share that with you. So I'm just going to pop in the chat a couple of our resources and they're free for you to use. And um, I'll finish there because I know you're conscious of time. Thanks so much, Gemma. Um, over to Gaida. Yes, I just want to highlight, um, thank you all of you for like contribution doing this for refugees. I want also to mention that thing that we also concern about our picture because the media all the time doesn't show the real picture of refugees and we struggle a lot and we're trying to change this all the time. A member of a global uh, steering group by UNCR and uh, refugee advisor group by Refugee Council and City of City and Politics, Century in Politics uh, by uh, uh, Century. Certain century, sorry, it's just my a lot of things going. So the thing all the time we concern about how we like show our picture in the media that we want to show who we are, like originally who we are before we become refugees, how we used to live because before we be refugees. So that is so important to tell the student this like to tell them how the people used to live before they became refugees because that is event came to our life we used to live normal life we used to have our houses our homes and we was living in peace and safety before we became refugees suddenly when the war start that when everything start change around us and everything so this is one of the important thing we concern about it i want also to ask you all to speak to refugees and hear from refugees itself because they are the people who gone through the journey and they want also to to introduce themselves to the community this part of for them like a opportunity for them to integrate to the community to being here and also to opportunity for you to hear the real story of the refugees during this long journey before he arrived here thank you thank you Gaida um, thanks so much for that. And over to, to Marjorie. Hi, everyone. 
while we're talking about schools, I think it's important to think about parents too. It's an excellent opportunity for everybody to be sharing together and learning off one another. Before the pandemic, I was out in Belgium with um, one of the Syrian families that are settled in Ostend, and it was absolutely wonderful. We had uh, a coming together of locals with the refugees and sharing cultures, crafts, music, dance, food, and it really was a very, very positive experience. And we had great fun as well. <laughs> so I think that's very important. Also, please note, this is Bushra's work. This is one of the mothers of my family that I connect. She is reconnecting with herself through artwork and she's healing the trauma that she's been through. So art is a very, very good medium for healing. Thanks so much, um, Marjorie, and to, to everybody for, for all of that. Um, inspiration I think um uh well over the past well since last refugee we've been thinking a lot about what refugee week um is and what it does and what it should be and what its aims are and the theme that that keeps coming up is um holding this kind of these two things one thing being celebrating what we have in common and connecting as fellow human beings and the other and the other part at the same time recognizing of course that we are in different situations and we face different barriers and um you know that in many ways if you're if you're if you're a british person that's born up here and a, and a, and a refugee then then you're not the same um but then on a deeper level you um you know we are the same and have that commonality um, so I think that you know, it was just something that as, as people were speaking was coming to mind in terms of we definitely see all of these different approaches um, as part of the whole and, um, you know, connecting, encouraging children to connect with these experiences and connect with, um, with other children who are refugees as fellow children, as fellow human beings is really um, at the heart of Refugee Week, as is, you know, as, um, you know, Michael was talking about thinking about um, you know, policy and the and the injustices that refugees face. Um, you know that that once you recognise that it's a fellow human being like you, of course, you know, on a very basic level, you don't want these things to happen to them. Um, so we are now going to go into breakout rooms for a chance to have a conversation and um, a bit of a chat in smaller groups. Um, please don't go away because we've found we've done quite a lot of these sessions over the past few months and. Um, People have really um, valued this opportunity to, to make those connections. I'm going to stop um, recording now. So thank you for joining everybody that has been watching this video.